Good morning. Happy Tuesday. The Caroline and Fort Worth thing has taken over my feed. I want to caution everybody. Well, first of all, I want to be very clear. People have listened to my last video and come across with two different conflicting things that they think that I am believing. I am agnostic as to whether or not the cops did anything wrong because I haven't seen any definitive videos. Was Carolina in Fort Worth injured? Yes. Were her injuries extensive? Yes. Does that mean the officers did anything wrong? No. Could the officers have done something wrong? Yes. Is it probable that they that they used excessive force? Yes. Is it certain that they used excessive force? No. Relax. Everybody wants everything today, right now. And that's not the way the system works. That's not the way anything works. Somebody's going to get the video. Someone's going to get the body cam video. And then we're going to be able to see. And we're going to be able to make better informed decisions about whether or not we think the officers did something wrong. But right now, we have literally insufficient information to make any determination. I am reminded in this situation of what happened in Leon Valley. What's his name? Uh, Mexican Padilla went into the non-public areas of the Leon Valley City Building got into an encounter with Joe Salvaggio, then chief of Leon Valley Police, and was arrested. There was an outcry. Not a big one, but a little one. Which got, uh, who's that enormous pothead from Arizona? Mark something or the other. He went down there to push the limits with Padilla. He ended up getting arrested along with Padilla. Padilla got arrested for trespassing because Padilla went back on the property like a dumbass. And this Mark guy, I think his name was Mark. I think he goes by Tucson Police Suck. Tuk. I think he's, he's short, but I think his name is Mark for some reason. Anyway, he attempted to interfere and he got arrested and he got tased pretty good and he pissed himself and... That increased the outcry because everybody thought, oh my God, well, not everybody, I, I didn't. If it had gone to trial, if it had gone to trial, uh, as far as the uh, excessive force claims by Tuke, I, I believe that the police had a better than 50-50 shot of prevailing. But every case has settlement value. And that's something that Tuke doesn't understand. He thinks that I was wrong because he ended up getting a settlement. I wasn't wrong. Every case has settlement value. But what would happen at trial is different. My opinion of what would happen at trial is generally different than my opinion of whether or not you can get a settlement. You can definitely get a settlement in almost any case. In almost any case. Provided you have a decent attorney. Well, anyway, after uh, Tuke was arrested... Then all of a sudden, various people, like James Freeman, organized or attempted to organize a, uh, a large protest against the city of Leon Valley. Now, a lot of the instigating people didn't show up, like James Freeman. And at the end of the day, a lot of people were arrested. A lot of phones were, were seized. And a lot of people didn't get any compensation, no compensation for it. There were some people who were arrested for various minor offenses around that. Not the, not the big group gathering, but various small gatherings around it. Who did get some compensation. 
But it ended up costing a lot of people a lot of money and a lot of aggravation. A lot of people lost their phones. And at the end of the day, the people who were likely to get a settlement got a settlement. And the people who weren't didn't. Like Padilla didn't get a settlement. Tucson Police Suck did. Uh, various other people who were arrested for minor things or actually showed injury did get settlements. But just relax. Just wait and see. Let's look at what happens. There are a lot of people out there who are making videos about this. And you're going to say, well, John, aren't you one of those? Well, I'm responding to them. But they're making videos off this to get clicks and views to get money because it's generating it's generating income for them. And it is in their interest to spark things up, to light a fire, to get people inflamed, to get people to want to see more, to work people up. This is this is a money making opportunity for certain people. And it's not in Carolina's best interest to play along. I believe she gave an interview, is at least my understanding. I don't watch C.J. Grisham, but someone said that C.J. Grisham was talking about her giving an interview. She should not be talking to anybody but a lawyer right now. Lawyer up. The charges were dropped. I suspected they would be. Go back to my video. I thought the charges were crap. I, I said I'd be shocked if any DA would take them to, uh, would actually pursue them. And surprisingly enough, not surprisingly, they were dropped. Who could have seen that coming? The next step, the next step for Carolina is to get an attorney who's going to represent her on her civil matter, file a 1983 lawsuit against the three cops, probably look for a Monell claim as well to try to get the city involved, whatever city they work for, and see where you can go from there. James Freeman asks, like, are we going to sue our way out of this? Are we going to vote our way out of this? Responding to the Caroline and Fort Worth situation. And someone else in my comment section said that, uh, that the officers need to be put on trial. Because a, a civil settlement, the people end up paying for. Well, I hate to break this to everybody, but uh, are you going to sue your way out of it? Yes, that is your remedy, James Freeman. That is your remedy. I don't know what, what Freeman, Freeman has never put forward any sort of rational, intelligible uh, opinion on how to handle these things that would actually work in reality. Like there's, there's nothing that he has offered as a replacement to police and to the inherent issues of having human beings who make mistakes out there enforcing the laws. Anytime you have humans, you're going to have people making mistakes. If you give someone the power to make an arrest and to use the force necessary to make the arrest, every once in a while you're going to end up with a situation where that person will either use force when there was no probable cause, because who knows if there's probable cause, not you, not me, not anybody, but the judge who makes the determination of whether or not that cop had probable cause, or the cop will use excessive force. What's excessive force? Well, that's what the finder of fact finds. That the, a finder of fact, a judge or a jury is going to have to determine whether or not the cop used more force than necessary, more force than reasonably necessary to effectuate the arrest. Who knows when that happens? Not you, not me. It's up to the jury or the judge. That's, that's when we know. That's when we know. As to the gentleman who wants to put them on trial, what are we going to put the cops on trial for? We don't even know what they did. We know the result of what they did but we don't know what they did to get that result. Did one of the officers trip and knock and knock Carolina over? Are we going to put him on trial for tripping? We don't know anything. And and what cause of action? And if it's just if it's just every time someone gets injured by a cop, we put the cop on trial. How long number 1 are we going to have cops? Would you would you continue to work where you're required to make arrests? When every time you make an arrest and someone gets injured, all of a sudden you're on trial, would you take that job? You wouldn't, would you? But cops are necessary. We need to have someone enforce the law. Even the gentleman who suggested the cops should be put on trial, who's going to arrest the cop and bring the cop to trial? 
another cop. We need cops. They are a necessary evil. And we can't put them on trial all over the place. And the assertion that it's it's the citizens who pay, well, obviously, if it's a city employee, even if the city employee has to pay, the, the money is going to come from pay received from the city, which is necessarily taxpayer funded. So yeah, the money is going to be paid by the by the citizens. Congratulations. But we don't but so but ignoring that, ignoring that, because I don't think that's technically what the guy was was asking about or was uh, irritated with. We don't know. Look at look back at the other issues that we have looked at where cops have been sued for for this liability. Look at the look at the De Castro lawsuit in LV MPD, De Castro versus LV MPD. De Castro is asking, what about these other cops? You know, uh, city, are you going to represent these cops? Can you can you accept service on their behalf? And what did the attorney say? The attorney, the LV MPD attorney, uh, our key Marbox attorney. They said, we don't know. The city hasn't made a determination of whether or not the city is going to defend these people yet. These people have to have been acting within the scope of the policy set forth by the city. to, And the city's going to make a determination of whether or not they're going to basically indemnify these cops. I'm assuming something like that happens in most places, in most cities. Most counties will have some means of indemnifying the cops if the cops are acting within the scope of the policy, within reasonable bounds. Or police unions will step in. And the cops will basically pool their money into some sort of an association that's going to provide for a defense and pay for, for settlements. And is it going to dis, dis, uh, dissuade cops? Well, well, let me put it to you. Let me let me put this to you. Because cops can make mistakes, they might have to pay for those mistakes. Because you, as a driver behind the wheel can make mistakes you have to pay for those mistakes if you negligently or even intentionally hit another vehicle you're on the hook financially so what do you do you have insurance you pull you pool that money and you're gonna say well you know how are we going to deter drivers from uh getting into car accidents if if the insurance company pays if it doesn't come directly out of the car driver's pocket well the point is to compensate the person who was injured. That's what the insurance company is for. And the insurance company makes sure that it continues to make money. So it raises the rates on the guy who's who's a bad driver. Or eventually it says we're not going to give you coverage. Why can't that happen with police? Why do we need one bad mistake and again, we don't even know if the cops made a mistake at this point. It, it could have been something simple where where uh, where Carolina tried to run and tripped and pulled officers down on top of her when she tripped. I mean, we just don't know. You don't know. You don't know and I don't know. You're putting the cart in front of the horse. But why, why do we have to have a trial? Why do we have to get rid of the police? I mean, think about all the negative interactions, all the police interactions that have been had that we've seen in this community. Think about what percentage of them in this community where auditors routinely resist and routinely defy the authority of the cops and routinely place themselves in these confrontational positions with the police. And think about how many of those end up with injuries to the auditor. It's a very low percentage. Carolina and Fort Worth has been doing this a long time. I know. I don't watch her channel. I don't I don't subscribe to her, but I've seen her around. I've heard her around. She's been around for a long time. She does a lot of this. She's had a lot of interactions with the cops. Very low number of injuries. Think about this. <clears throat> you play football. You go play football. You look at football players. They play a lot of they play a lot of football and they get injured every once in a while. Just because they get injured doesn't mean like, oh, shit, we got to change the whole system. No, you still play football. You put pads and stuff in place. You get insurance, health insurance, liability insurance, whatever. Then you play football. There's going to be, there's violence inherent in being a cop. There's violence inherent in being a criminal. There's violence inherent in playing football. You have to kind of expect that. You have to understand that. You're, you're agreeing to participate in this thing and, eh, you know. 
Anyway, it's all going to come down to, did the cop have probable cause? I think the cop did. So the, uh, so they were, they were, uh, within their authority, in my opinion, because I believe they had probable cause to use the necessary amount of force to effectuate the arrest. Did they exceed that? Well, maybe you definitely get, you'll definitely get a settlement out of it. Hashtag I can't guarantee results, but you'll get a settlement out of it. Hashtag I can't guarantee results. But did they actually, I mean, if it goes all the way to trial, we'll find our fact find that they committed excessive force. I don't know. That's a good question. That's a question I wouldn't want to be on either side of. That's why you'd settle it. That's why you'd settle it. Anyway, I've, I've rambled long enough. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.